So in this video, I'm going to show you how I use this tiny modifier, the MagMod MagSphere, to create these images. So hi everyone, this is Jiggy, a portrait and wedding photographer from the Philippines, and welcome to the channel. So before anything else, if you guys haven't subscribed to the channel and would want to learn more about off-camera flash photography, or maybe just photography in general, then this channel may be for you. So if you want, you can subscribe to the channel, and while you're at it, click that notification bell so that you get notified every time I upload a new video like this. Now, if you want to see some of my images, you can also follow me on Instagram. It's at Jiggy Alejandrino. Okay, so welcome again to my small home studio. This small home studio, as I've mentioned in previous videos, is approximately just about two by three square meters. So this is a relatively small shooting area. So as I said, I will be using this tiny modifier, the MagMod MagSphere, to create three layouts. Now, I will be attaching it to this one. This is my Sony F60RM. This is a speed light that's battery operated, very, very practical, very small. And at the same time, it is mounted on the MagMod MagShoe. And this MagSphere will be connected via the MagGrip, such as this one. Then from here, it just goes on my light stand, like that. Okay? And you could also see here that I have two backdrops. Actually, they're both from Kate Backdrop. They're hand-painted canvas backdrops. They're about 5 feet by 7 feet. And one I am using as a background. And the other one is really just to cover up the table to create that seamless foreground to background look. Okay, so now let's go on to my camera. So the camera that I will be using is my Sony A7R Mark IV with a 50mm 1.4 lens installed. Now I am shooting it with a 50mm because I want to shoot it relatively wide. I don't want to do a tight portrait for this particular layout. Now let's go to my flash settings first or my camera settings first. I am actually on 1 over 1600 f1.4 ISO 100. Why is my shutter speed so high since I am shooting here inside the studio? Well, it's because of all this modeling light, or I mean all this video lights that are actually turned on. Now, I can actually turn this off, but I honestly want you guys to get the full experience and be able to see everything that's happening. That's why instead of turning this off, I will actually put my flash on high speed sync, which then allows me to shoot at shutter speeds beyond my flash sync speed. That's why I can do one over 1600. The purpose of that one is you will see when I turn off my flash, everything is pitch black. So everything that you are seeing now is actually a live feed from my camera that's recorded here to my Atomos Ninja V. So basically every single image that you will be seeing is straight out of the camera unless stated otherwise. Also the trigger that I am using to control my flash wirelessly is this one, the WRC1M from Sony. The beautiful thing about this WRC1M is when I put it on top of my camera, it now allows me to control all my flash settings through the in-menu system of my camera, okay? So as you can see, I turned on my flash, it automatically disabled live view. The reason why that's important is so that I can actually see what I am shooting. If I turn off my flash again, you will see that it's completely dark, and then when I turn it on, it disables whatever settings that are set now. But remember, every single thing that you will be seeing now, the light will be coming from my flash because we've already removed all existing ambient light as you can see now, okay? So with that out of the way, I think it's time to call in my wife who again will be our model for today, okay? Babe, come on in. Hi babe, thank you very much again for doing this. And of course, you look lovely. Have a seat, have a seat. And I'd like to thank our friend once again, Mela Jimenez, for virtually assisting Coco put on her makeup for today. Okay, so let's, what do we do? <laughs> so we're gonna do three layouts today. And the first layout, guys, is something that's gonna be very controversial because we are shooting a beautiful girl and yet I am shooting her with harsh light, okay. So this MagMod MagSphere, don't mistake it for a modifier that will actually give you soft light because it won't. Because what soft light or how you can get soft light is to make your light source bigger than that of your subject. Obviously with this one, even if I put it this close, it's nowhere going to be near as big as my wife's face. But what this thing does basically 
it just really spreads out the light evenly. In other words, it removes hot spots. This particular layout, the first one that we are doing, basically we are going to be shooting with harsh light. So since the light, the light modifier is not going to give us really soft light, then we might as well take advantage of the light that's gonna it's gonna be giving us. So again, the point of this exercise is do not be afraid of harsh light. Just learn how to use it to your advantage, okay? So with this particular scene, I think one thing that we need to set maybe will be our white balance. Normally, I would have my white balance set at 5600 Kelvin, but for this one, I wait, I'll take a test shot first so that they can see how it actually looks like with the standard white balance. There we go. Now, one thing that you have to remember when you're shooting with harsh light is that you have to match the pose to the mood, all right, which we will actually tackle later. But as you can see, the the color of the flash, the natural color doesn't really, um, it doesn't do anything for me. So I think we will use another creative tool, which is our white balance tool. And basically just set it to about 4,000 Kelvin to make it cooler. Okay, and my flash, I didn't put anything on it. That's basically how it looks like, babe. This is just gonna be a test shot. So I'll just take one test shot. There we go, very nice. But actually, I think I will twist this a little bit here because I can see some shadow there. And the last thing that I actually want to show you guys is my flash power. As I said, I just have to press a custom function button here and it brings up the flash menu system. As you can see, I am actually on high speed sync. If I remove high speed sync, if I turn it off, look what will happen. Automatically, my shutter speed will go down to 1 over 250 because that is the flash sync speed of my camera. So for me to be able to control my ambient light, I have to turn on my high speed sync. My flash power now is set at 1 fourth power and I think that one is the proper exposed uh, that one is the proper power to get proper exposure for this particular image. Okay? All right, babe. Let's get into your pose. Remember that your light is here, so if you want to face your light, go ahead and face your light, okay? Nice. Very good. Notice how powerful her, her pose will be because it is being shot by harsh light and we need very powerful poses to make this one work. So that's layout number one. So guys, don't be afraid to shoot with harsh light. All you have to do is really match the scene, match the look, match the mood to, to the quality of your light. Though, if you want to make this softer, we can. And that is going to be layout number two. So if you guys aren't really fond of harsh light, so here in layout number two, let's create soft light. So how do we create soft light? As I said earlier, basically we have to make the light source bigger. So I did that using basically the inner diffuser of the five in one reflector, but I still have my mag mod here with a mag sphere so that it really, um, the light spreads around this, this, um, this diffuser and you don't have any hot spots here in the center, okay? Now, since we also want this particular photograph to be brighter, I will now bring in more ambient light. So I did that using my shutter speed. I brought it down now to 1 over 250. So if I turn off my flash, that is basically what the ambient light is doing. And all of these lights are actually set at 5600 Kelvin. So therefore, I will bring my white balance now back to 5600 Kelvin. Now when I turn on my flash, this flash unit now will be so much stronger because we are no longer shooting in high speed sync and I turned it off here, I now brought it back to 132 power, okay? So again, since this one's gonna be a light and airy type of photograph, the pose needs to change too, okay? All right, babe. With a bit of a smile now, there. Very nice. See, beautiful. This is a shot, I'll show you now. This is a shot without the flash, and this is now a shot with flash. Beautiful. So now we've got a very, very simple, beautiful photograph using just one light and a diffuser that comes with a five in one reflector. And for the third layout, this is what we're gonna do. I will just remove this, okay? And then 
have Coco do the same thing. I won't touch any of the settings or maybe I'll try to bring in a bit more ambient light. Then to bring in a bit more ambient light, I'll just use my shutter speed, get her properly exposed there. Okay, that's perfect. Then it's time to play around. I will actually use this flash to create some camera flare. But I think it's missing something. Right now we're at 5600 Kelvin already, but I think I want it to have a, war a warmer tone, so let's do this. Let's bring in the MagMod CTO gel. So I will put the CTO gel here. CTO means color temperature orange. Since I put a gel, so I need to make the flash stronger probably. Okay, I shifted to the 85 millimeter 1.4 lens so that I can shoot tighter and get more flare in. Okay, babe, let's do that. Yeah, there we go, chin down, tilt your head away. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Tilt, tilt head, tilt head. There, again, that hold. Love it. Okay. And there we go. Three layouts basically just using this tiny modifier, the MagMod MagSphere. Okay. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you did, please do consider subscribing to the channel and while you're at it, click that notification bell so that you get notified every time I upload a new video. And if you want to see more of our images, you can always follow me on Instagram. It's at Jiggy Alejandrino. Okay, so till the next video.